Well, it's the end of another day here in uh, the garage, enjoying a cigar. Uh, thank you for joining me. I know you have an option on what you're going to watch, and I really do appreciate you joining me. If you've not already, go ahead and please uh, subscribe to the channel, like the videos. Uh, I used to mock people whenever they would say like them, but they actually do improve the visibility. And uh, as this thing's trying to take off, or I'm trying to get this thing to take off, I really do appreciate it. Uh, anything you can do to help. So doing that is a big, big help for me. So I appreciate that. Share it if you like anything in here and most definitely add comments to uh, what you like, what you'd like to hear about uh, and anything else that you'd like to suggest. Um, July 3rd, 2023. It is the 160th anniversary of the Battle of Gettysburg. And I know so many of us have different things about that uh, battle that stand out in our mind. Um, obviously, the the number of lives that were lost in the battle, the casualties were um, astronomical. Uh, the whole battle itself, the fact that it took place over the three days, uh, is a big piece. The number of um, divisions that were completely eradicated, just really, really heart wrenching. Uh, but then you look at the overall civil war itself and what caused it and it just really forces you to reflect on how did we get to that point as a nation how did we ever arrive to uh such disagreement and division and you know i think about how how oversimplified and incomplete our education of history is in the education system. And, you know, I, I really do want to believe the best in the education I received growing up. And I'm sure that you received as well. There are things that you uh, wish would have been better, but ultimately we hope that they are doing the best that they can. Um, but within that, you do kind of wonder why specific items were chosen, why some were left out. And, you know, one of the things for me, uh, is I've always had a voracious appetite for learning, specifically about history. I like to put myself in, in the shoes mentally of people who were there and, and thinking about what they did and what I would have done, you know, if I would have acted or if I would have frozen. Uh, or, God forbid, if I would have sat back and done nothing. That would have been horrendous. Um, you know, even doing this thing that I'm on, this journey that I'm on right now of having a cigar at night with you all and doing videos about it and getting people together in my community is my attempt to have an active participation in history uh, more than just being a bystander. But, you know, one of the things that I, I did in my studies was I read uh, Battle Cry of Freedom in 2020. And I don't know if you've read that book, but if you have not, I highly recommend it. I know a lot of people here in the South have obviously read that and are very familiar with it. But I did want to bring out one piece that, <clears throat> excuse me, was an example of, of just one of the things that would have changed my education and my understanding about the Civil War had I been taught this in school. And it was the fact that the election of President Lincoln um, there, it was not without scandal. And the fact that there were 33 states and 15 of those were Southern states, 10 of them, 10 of those Southern states did not have Lincoln on the ballot, not even an option to vote for him. And he was elected president. And so that's why many people point to that as the catalyst for what sparked the uh, outbreak of the civil war. So, you know, you think about, <clears throat> excuse me, the again, the oversimplification, and I'm not wanting to negate the importance of the fighting for the liberties of those who were enslaved. Um, absolutely 110% a necessity. But to dismiss the fact that it was against the freedoms of a Southern population who felt like the North was not even giving them a say in anything. 
um, by completely saying you aren't necessary to be involved in this process, we don't need you to elect a president, is not something that can just be ignored if you want to do true justice of understanding history. So th that's the thing that I, I took away from that was just, whew, it is way more complicated, <laughs> whatever situation that you are hearing about, that you are learning about, um, that you're experiencing, there is way more going on behind the scenes and what you're made aware of. Uh, there was another book that I read by Roger Kennedy uh, about Burr, Hamilton, and Jefferson. And I just wanted to read just a piece of it real quick here before we end uh, tonight. Just the way he worded this. He'd spend a lot of time uh, in, in, in D.C. surrounded by politicians, writing about politicians, um, and just his insight from the years of seeing it, the workings of the government and politics and, and all of that from the underbelly gave me some additional insight that has helped my perspective and hopefully it will help yours as well. Um, he says, over the years, life has informed me that the established reputation of many public persons living and dead is rarely congruent with their true character. He says, I recall my mentor, Eric Severide, saying of one such person, there is little more there than meets the eye. But that is not all that needs to be said, for often there is more, especially among those whom history or journalism have dismissed as failures. Aaron Burr is the central figure in this book because his character was better than his reputation. Though unquestionably a failure, his role in our history was larger than the credit he has received. The term spin control is modern, but the practice to which it refers is ancient and constant in all political systems. Reputation is a cocoon of many threads, some of them spun around themselves by the characters within, some gathered from others, whether solicited or unavoidably attached by controversy. Appraisals of character require unwinding such cocoons to examine each strand for authenticity. Any undertaking of that sort must be energized by the unwinder's own needs and guided by the unwinder's own sense of justice. No one is ever as good <laughs> as they are, uh, as their public, public reputation portrays them to be, and nobody is ever as bad as their public uh, reputation causes them to be perceived. And the point of that is that you really need to get to know somebody. And today it seems like so many people are dismissing and writing people off, afraid to have conversations because conversations lead to understanding. And so I'll end tonight with that saying, I hope that you will have conversations with people in your life. I hope that you will possibly give somebody in a even political or a public figure that you've seen and rather than just dismiss them um, and, and say that they can contribute nothing, uh, they aren't worthy of having a voice, pause and think about it and allow them that opportunity to expose their humanity uh, through conversation. So uh, again, if you are in the area in Tennessee and you're of age, come join me sometime. I'd love to have you. We can have a cigar and we can change the world. Have a good night.